So we have two sets of data, uh, the green set and the blue set. And if we look at them and say like, okay, uh, let's say that this is like number of runs given up by a pitcher, right? So if I try to calculate the mean for both of these, like this one would be 5 plus 12 plus 3 plus 4, and I'm going to divide that by 4, I'll figure out this right side has a mean of 6. Right? Uh, and if I do the same thing for this pitcher, he gave up 6 runs, 5 runs, 5 runs, and 8 runs, right? Um, and divide that by 4, I'll figure out the same thing that he gave up on average um, six runs uh, a game. Um, these, that doesn't mean that these two pitchers are the same though. Um, quite far from it, right? Uh, variance and standard deviation are going to give us another way of comparing these two pitchers. Basically, um, how, how spread out their data is. So if you look at this guy, he pitches good sometimes and pitches terrible other times. This guy's more consistent. And that's what variance and standard deviation are going to, um, to tell us. So how to find them. So for variance, our first step is I'm going to just say, well, the mean was six and same thing over here, the mean was six. So what I want to do is I want to find the difference. I want to find the difference each time between the mean and uh, what, what actually happened. So this time the mean was pretty good. It's only off by one. This time it was off by six. This time it was off by three, and this time it was off by two, right? Um, and this guy's mean, he was off by zero, one, one, and two. Okay. So if I was finding the mean deviation, all I do is add these up and divide them, right? But I'm finding the variance. And so to find the variance, what I got to do is I got to square each one of these numbers, right? And so when I square them, I get 1, 36, 9, and 4. Over here, I'll get 0, 1, 1, and 4. So to find variance, basically you take the differences, you square them, and now I'm going to add them all up and find the average of those numbers. So on the left side, we got 1, 36, 9, and 4. So add these all up, and I get 50. Um, and I'm going to divide that by 4, which will get me uh, a variance of 12.5. Uh, over here, when I add these all up, I get 6, and 6 divided by 4 means that I'll have a variance of 1.5. So the higher the variance, the more spread out the data is. Like this guy was thrown, he, he, was, he was more wild than, than this guy who was pretty consistent, right? So the bigger the variance, more spread out the data. Smaller variance, more compact the data. Um, standard deviation uh, is kind of easy to find after we got this far, right? Um, so the standard deviation over here. Basically what we got to do is I've got to take the square root of the variance. So I, I'm going to take the square root of the variance. Okay. Um, and so for the standard deviation over here, that's just the square root of 12.5. And the square root of 12.5 is 3.5 ish, right? I mean, there's a lot of very, uh, decimals after that, but we'll, we'll leave it at 3.5. Um, the variance, uh, the standard deviation over here, sorry, is the square root of that variance, which is 1.5. So the square root of 1.5, yeah, is 1.2 ish, right? A lot of decimals after that, but I'll just, I'll just truncate it right there. Um, so standard deviation is, uh, far more useful um, than variance. It's a very important number. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. So if you lined up everyone in America, asked them what their IQ was, right? Um, not surprising you'd get something like this. You'd get a lot of people in the middle who are, you know, average. Right? And you get some people that are below average, sure. You always will, right? But as you get further and further away from average, there's less and less people like that. And same thing, there's a couple people, there's quite a few people that are a little bit smarter than average, but as you get further away, I mean like the, the, the true geniuses, they get, they get less and less and less. 
This is what's called a normal curve. If we have a normal curve um, for IQ, uh, the middle score for IQ is 100. Okay? That's how they set up the test. Here's the thing. The standard deviation is 15. So that means if I go 15 up uh, to 115, and I go 15 down to 85, in between those two numbers, that's where 68% of the data lies. Right? Um, I can do that one better. If I, do, if I go two standard deviations up, so 15 times 2 is 30, right? So an IQ of 130 to 70, this captures 95% of the data. If I go to three standard deviations out, uh, it's guaranteed to capture 99% of the data. So if I had a class, I mean, if I gave out a test, and um, I figured out that the mean score was a 74%, and I had a standard deviation of 5%, I could conclude from that that between 69% um, and 79%, I have right one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below. 68% of my students are in that range. If I go two standard deviations uh, above and below, so that's 10 in each direction, that's a 64% uh, to an 84%. Um, I know that 95% of my students fall in that range.